So today's notes are all about dividing fractions. And we're going to start with a few examples that we're going to do in number lines, visual models, or pictures. And then we're going to show you um, a rule called the invert and multiply rule that helps you divide fractions using just the numbers without having to rely on pictures. So the first thing you'll notice is that I'm using some colors today. I'm going to use a brown, a green, a red, and then a blue. So if you'd like to pause the video right now and get some colored pencils or crayons or markers, um, that's fine. If you only have one writing utensil, you can use your pencil. It's just much easier today to use the colors for the photographs. Okay, so dividing fractions. We're going to zoom in on this first column, and we're just going to start there. So the first thing we're going to notice is that we're going to start with an example that starts with a fraction and is divided by a whole number. And a real life example would be I have a half a pan of brownies and I want to share it with three people. And I want to know how much of the pan of brownies does each person receive. And so I'm going to use brown for this one. Um, and I'm going to shade in this little rectangle on my number line. And this rectangle represents one half because it starts at zero, and if that's hard for you to view, you can note that. It ends at one half because all the way over here is one whole. So if it went all the way to one, it would be a full pan of brownies, but we're only at half of a pan. You'll notice at the top that we also noticed, or we also noted that there were these markings. And if I take my blue color, there's these markings that go from zero to one. And the reason that these markings are helpful is because these marks split my brownies into the three pieces that I'm giving away to friends. You'll notice that there's also three empty spaces over here in the other half of my brownie pan that was empty. And so if I just circle one of these pieces, since my question was asking how much did each person get, they got one piece. And the size of these pieces, I need to count how many pieces there would have been from zero all the way to one, or how many pieces would be in the full brownie pan. And if I count up those pieces, we get one, two, three, and if we count up those pieces, we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So the size of that brownie piece is one sixth of my whole pan. Let's do this visual model again. And I'm going to use brown again since it's brownies. So a way to show this is using a rectangle model. And if I color this in, this shows that that's about what half of a brownie pan would look like. Now, this next pan is the same size. And I do have a half mark. But I've also put other measurements or other marks that are going to help me count up my pieces. So for example, if I color in one half again, I can see that I've cut this half into the three pieces that I'm giving away to friends. And once again, if I circle one of these pieces, I can show that this is one sixth of the whole pan of brownies because one, two, three, four, five, six pieces give me a full pan. We have the invert and multiply rule, and this is called multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal is a fancy math word for flipping something upside down. And so the quick little reminder is called KCF or keep change flip. And this rule essentially says that once you make everything look like a fraction, you can keep the first fraction, change the division to multiplication, and then flip or take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So three holes turn into one third. And then when you multiply those, you get one sixth because the numerator is one times one is one. And then the denominator is two times three is six. So we get one sixth without having to draw a picture. Now let's rewind a little bit and let's try this whole process again with another example. So next we have a whole number divided by a fraction. So sticking with the food theme, let's talk about some pizzas. In this example, I would be starting with three whole pizzas, and I'm going to divide them onto platters to serve at my party. And every platter is going to hold three-fourths of a pizza. And let's figure out how many platters I'm going to be able to fill. Okay, I'm going to use red as a good pizza color. So what I'm going to do is on my number line, I am just going to gently shade all the way from the zero up to the three because we have three pizzas. So here's the first pizza, second pizza, and third pizza. Next, I'm going to take a color like my blue, 
and I'm going to start circling the groups of three fourths. Since three fourths of a pizza go on a platter, every time I circle those three fourths, that's gonna be a new platter of pizza. So here I have three slices. Here I have another three, so there's two platters so far. I have another three fourths and another three fourths. So my answer is that I have four platters full of pizza. Let's try this again with a rectangle. So I'm gonna color in all this pizza. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just notes for yourself. Okay. So here's one pizza, two pizzas, and three pizzas. So once again, I am going to circle those platters that I'm going to be serving at my party. So here's three fourths of a pizza, and that's gonna go on one platter. Right below that, we have our second platter with three fourths on it. We have our third platter. And then the fourth, we have these extra pieces, but we can scoop these up. Even though they're from different pizzas, it's still three fourths. So once again, I got an answer of four when I divided my three pizzas up into platters of three fourths. Let's see if our keep, change, flip rule works again. So we had three whole pizzas divided by three fourths. We kept the three holes. We changed it to multiplication. We flipped it to be four thirds. When we multiplied the numerators, three times four is 12, one times three is three. And since that's improper, we can divide. And 12 divided by three is four platters. So our invert and multiply rule works once again. Let's try our third way, which is a fraction by a fraction. And so this reminds me um, it, of something that my husband, Mr. Tupons, might do in his workshop. So since he works in construction, he's often making projects. So let's pretend he has a piece of plywood that is three-fourths of a foot long. Now he wants to cut it into pieces, and each piece needs to be three-eighths of a foot long to make some shelves. Let's figure out how many projects or how many shelves he can build with his plywood. So I'm going to use my final color, which is green. On this first number line, I'm going to carefully shade in three-fourths. I'm going to do the same thing on the next number line. Even though it's cut into different size pieces other than just fourths, we can see that it's still equivalent or equal. Now I'm going to grab my blue once again, and I am going to show one, two, three eighths, and there would be our first shelf that he was able to cut, and then one, two, three more, and he got two shelves from his piece of plywood. I'm gonna do the same thing again, but using rectangles. So I'm gonna shade in three fourths. That's the plywood he's starting with. Let's shade it in again on the other pay, or on the other rectangle just to show that even though I marked different measurements, three fourths is still equivalent. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark or circle the shelves that he's able to cut. So one, two, three eighths is the first shelf and these three make the second shelf. Okay, let's verify and see if keep, change, flip. So we're keeping three fourths, that's the plywood he's starting with. We changed it to multiply. We flipped or we used the reciprocal of three eighths and it turned into eight over three. Three times eight on top is 24, four times three is 12. And since this is improper, 24 divided by 12 is again, two shelves. So there you have a bunch of different ways to think about dividing fractions. So whether it's fractions, whole numbers, or a mix, we can use number lines, visual models, or the keep, change, flip rule. Now, what I'd like us to do right now is to kind of upgrade and really focus on the numbers. Because as the numbers get larger or my fractions or mixed numbers get more complicated, it's gonna be really, really difficult to be drawing these pictures and circling things or marking these number lines. It tends to take quite a while. So for the purpose of the rest of our notes today, we are really going to focus on dividing fractions using keep, change, flip. And I'm going to put my little reminder off to the side. And that little reminder is KCF. It's kind of like KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, but we mix them up a little bit to be KCF. And what I do is I think of this in my mind, and it reminds me of the first fraction being kept or stayed the same. It reminds me to change the division to multiplying and to flip or invert or flip upside down that next fraction. Okay, so these are just some steps to help you. Now, I want you to turn over your notes, and I'm going to zoom out. It'll take me a moment. 
Okay. Now, it seems like a lot of steps, but what's gonna, what you're going to notice and what's going to happen is the more you do these steps over and over and over again, the more automatic they're going to become, the better you're going to become at it, and the faster it's going to go the more often that you do this. So we're going to just dive right in, and we are going to use these seven steps with all four of these example problems. So the first step is to make everything a fraction. If it's already a fraction, we can keep it, and if it doesn't look like a fraction, we're going to make it look like a fraction. Steps two, three, and four are those keep, change, and flip. We're going to keep the first fraction, change to multiplication, and flip the second. Step five, we're going to be multiplying the two fractions together. And then step six and seven, we have to do one or both of those. Um, step six says if it's an improper fraction, we need to fix it and make it a mixed number. And seven says simplify if you need to or if it's possible. So we're going to start with this first one. Uh, 3 fourths divided by 1 6. I'm just going to put a big check mark here because they're both already fractions. I don't have any extra work to do there. Next, I see this large box, and this is where I'm going to keep, change, and flip. So I'm going to keep my first fraction the same. So I'm just going to write 3 fourths again. I'm going to change the division into multiplication. And I'm going to flip the third fraction upside down. So instead of 1 6, I'm going to flip it into 6 over 1 or 6 holes. Okay. Next, step 5, we're going to multiply these two. Now, some people think it's helpful to rewrite it as 3 times 6 all as the numerator and 4 times 1 as the denominator. But if you want to skip this step and just multiply the numerators and denominators in your head, that's fine. We get 3 times 6 is 18 over 4 times 1, which is 4. Step six says fix it if it's improper. 18 over 4 is definitely improper. And to fix this, we're going to divide. We're going to do 18 divided by 4. Now, 4 goes into 18 four times. It's 16. And my remainder is 2. So turning that into my answer would be 4 and 2. I'm going to look back to step 5. It was fourths, so it's 2 fourths. Now, I've got to simplify this if I can, and I definitely can. Now, 2 and 4 are both even, so I'm going to divide by 2 on the top and divide by 2 on the bottom, and we get 1 half. So my final answer is 4 and a half. I'm now going to go back to the start, and I'm going to repeat this process for our other examples. So in this next one, we have 3 divided by 3 fourths. So the first step is to make them both fractions. So I'm going to get my two fraction lines ready. 3 fourths is all ready to go. I'm also going to copy down my division. Now, 3 is just 3 wholes. But to show this as a fraction, we can just put it over 1 since 1 is that first whole number. So 3 over 1 is the same way, is, a, is another way to write 3 wholes. Okay, next we're going to keep change flip. So we're going to keep 3 over 1. We're going to change to multiplication. And we're going to flip the second fraction. So now it's going to be 4 over 3. Next, we're going to multiply, and I bet we can do this one without writing it out. So let's do the top. 3 times 4 is 12, and 1 times 3 is 3. It's improper, so I'm going to set up my division. 12 divided by 3. Oh, I know this one, mental math. It's 4, and there's no leftovers. So I'm going to jot down my answer of 4. No leftovers. Now, it says to simplify, but I noticed that there's no other way to write the number 4. So since it's a whole number and there's not even a fraction with it, my final answer stays as a 4. Okay, let's try our third example. So we're going to make these into fractions. 3 tenths is already there. I'm going to show my division sign. Now we have 2 and 4 fifths. So the way that I remember how to make mixed numbers into improper fractions is Texas. I put a T and an X, but they really represent addition and multiplication. So now I do 5 times 2, which is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14, and my denominator stays a 5. Okay, I'm ready. So we're going to keep 14 fifths the same, so I'll write it again. We're going to change to multiplication, and we are going to flip to make 10 thirds. Now it's time to multiply. So 14 times 10 over 5 times 3. Let's see what we get. Well, 14 times 10 is 140, and 5 times 3 is 15. That is definitely improper, so I'm going to set up some division. And if you need to set it up somewhere else where you have more room, feel free to do that. 
and we're going to divide by 15. 15 does not go into 1 or 14. It goes into 140 nine times. 9 times 15 is 135, and you could have written that out if you need to. Let's subtract, and we get a remainder of 5. So I'm going to write my answer 9 and 5 somethings. I'm going to look back to step 5 and say that it's 15. I think I can simplify this. Okay, 9 and 5 15. Well, I see a 5 fact, so let's divide both parts of my fraction by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 1, and 15 divided by, sorry, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So I got 9 and 1 third. Okay, we're on to our last one. So the first step is to make them both fractions. Well, 9 is the same as 9 over 1. And then I'm going to use Texas to remind myself how to do this. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3 is 15 fourths. Now I'm going to keep 15 fourths, change to multiplication, and flip this to 1 ninth. When I do my multiplication, I think I can do this one in my head. 15 times 1 up top is 15. 4 times 9 on the bottom is 36. Now I do not have any division to do because this is not an improper fraction. The small number is already on the top, so it's ready to be simplified. So I'm going to write 15, 36, and then find a math fact. Um, I see a threes fact, so I'm going to divide by threes, and I get 5 twelfths. 5 and 12 have nothing else in common, so I know that it's in simplest form. So I understand that was a lot of notes. This is actually all of the notes we're going to have for our entire dividing of fractions unit. So feel free to rewind this, watch it again. Um, especially if there was a part you'd like to see again. And then when you are ready, you're going to fold this and glue it into your notebook. So a quick reminder when we're folding our notes, there's always going to be a section for glue. So a quick way for me to do this is I always want to fold so that I can see the glue section without having any of my words come across this fold. So I'm going to unfold it and just make sure that I can see all of our notes without chopping any of it off. And then I'm going to glue this in, and it will open just like a little door in our notebook. So hopefully that's helpful, and I look forward to practicing.